this weekend Erica and I are gonna cook outside and show you how easy it is to be vegan a lot of people say if you live in the country you have to kill the animals for you to survive well let me tell you something I say no and you can eat other foods that can fill you up keep you warm and give you loads of energy now we're taking Chi Chi out for a little a little stroll. Erica, you want to grab this leash, babe? Hold on, JJ. Hi, Miranda. And Chi Chi decided he wanted to go into the woods. So that's what we're doing. We're not far from the home. But this is where he wants to go. And it's so beautiful up here. It's a little chilly today. I mean, it's not that bad. It's what, minus 10? Okay, Chi Chi, you should make it a little easier for me, babe. I should have put on my snowshoes. Not that much snow, but would have made made it a little easier. Oh, we get some nice birch paper, Erica. See if you find any birch paper on the floor. Not, not that way, JJ. This way, come. No. Hold on, Chi Chi. Hold on, JJ. Okay. Jeez. He makes it difficult. Like he's, he's on a mission. Stay, Cheech. Stay. Stay for Mama. Stay for Mama. He got his little boots on. Sorry if I'm shaking you up, guys. He got his little boots on because he's so little and we don't want him to freeze his feet. Chichi, we can't go that way. This way. Come this way. This way, did you look? Come this way. Come this way. Come this way.
It's not so bad here where there's a little bit of sun. But back at the house, and it was cold. It's colder than what it is. It feels colder. But it doesn't stop us. And that's what's important. Because we have to make an effort to go out and to enjoy the outdoors as much as we can. Now we could have taken the road to our house or to his house. That would have taken us I'd say about maybe five minutes. The problem with that is the cars that come by drive like crazy people. And I'm not interested in losing my life so early. I have a lot of things I gotta still do. So we decided to take the trail, enjoy the view, Break some ice if we're thirsty. And yeah, and get to a place through here. It smells very crunchy. Sorry guys if I'm making you deaf. I'll go over here. Look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna get me some ice and I'm gonna be able to I'm getting stuck here. So I should use my other hand then. Okay guys. You want some? Oh no, I don't have my gloves on. For my thirst. Hold on guys. Ah. Mm-hmm. There we go. We're thirsty. All we have to do is suck on some ice. It's not that far. She's only a kilometer away. And the best part about hiking with snowshoes is you actually burn more calories than if you weren't hiking with snowshoes. How many calories do you burn, Erica? 600 calories an hour, guys. I think that's a good deal. I had a nice sandwich before I left. My dog wasn't happy, so he decided to keep him at home. We're not going to be gone for long, but we do need to put our workout in. Stay in shape, because Erica told me she wants to do a winter backpacking trip. I know a moose has longer front. That's not a, it's not a deer. No. Okay, so my daughter's going to check to see what kind of prints these are. Okay, so how are they? Oh, you're stepping on the Over there. Yeah, it's a moose bread. How oh, exciting. That's a big moose too. Eh? Hmm? That's a pretty big moose. The moose have two little dots in the back. That's the nice thing about doing winter hikes, is you get to see where the animals pass that you normally don't see in the summer. You would never know that these animals would be so busy. Look how busy it is. You coming? How 
beautiful guys. Someone came on here with their four-wheeler. Finding my husband's cousin. Ah, uh, look at that beautiful chaga waiting for us to reach it. I'm going to show you where the chaga is. Erica. You see it? Okay, right there, guys. Not sure if I could zoom you in. Uh, we're not the only one hunting for chaga. But that there, my dear, is chaga. Way too high for us to get. We'd have to have some kind of either ladder. Way too high for us to get. Let me zoom you out. Alright guys, if we see anything exciting, I will show it to you later. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, that looks like a wolf print to me. And it's all over. Look at that. That's a huge wolf print. The Whispering Forest. It's a wolf print. Yeah, my daughter just checked it. It is definitely a wolf print. Well, this is the land of the wolves up here. Look at that. The Whispering Forest. And there's a nice sunny spot there too. Yeah, there's more than one wolf here walking at the same time. All right, guys. See you in a bit. Okay, so we're up at my cousin's mountain. He owns 151. Okay. What is this? It's a perdri bird. Bird. Okay. Yes. Oh, partridge. What no. is this? Yeah, yeah. Partridge. Bam bam. <laughs> I take a picture of you, bam bam. Isn't it beautiful? We climbed a huge mountain in the back of his home. And we've been going uphill. Under the snow it's a little icy, but we've got good tractions with our snowshoes. Celine is just doing it with the boots. She's used to doing this. But really beautiful country up here. And this is what it's all about. She's been showing us all the different prints that she spots on the way up and it's just beautiful but it's all uphill very beautiful my nose is a little cold it might fall off a beautiful country wait for me here this is going to be fun going down.
that's all I see. It's good we brought the boot, eh? Chewing all the way up to the mountain, which was great because coming down that mountain made it so much easier with the spikes. I'm not sure if you can lift up your shoe, uh, your shoe, Erica. Uh, there's like these huge spikes underneath. I'm not sure if you can see it. There they are, and it really made it easy coming down the uh, down the mountain. You just they were just jamming into the uh, into the ice and the snow, so that was pretty good. But yeah, so. Uh, I'm gonna just stop recording now. I just want to tell you what we did. We went up there and we got to see all of Mont Tremblant from there, right? Yeah, so that's it. But look how beautiful it is up here and it's so peaceful and quiet. You can actually hear the water running. It's freezing up, but you can actually hear it. But when I stay still like this, I know why my phone froze because I feel a little frozen right now. <laughs> I think my eyelids are going to freeze shut. But really beautiful. Uh, you actually burn 600 calories for every hour that you use them. And, uh, but it did make our life a little easier. Coming down that hill for sure. So anyhow, 
I'm just gonna take a couple of pictures up here with my daughter and uh, I'll see you in a bit guys when we get back to the house. Okay, we're back guys. It's dark and my daughter wanted me to show how we're gonna make, say you're outside in the wild and you're out camping and you're, you really don't have much water, especially in the winter time. Uh, you want to be able to make yourself something to eat, but you don't have either a lake near you. Uh, you can actually make some great meals with very little resources. Not as easy to start a fire when it's wet and snowy, but you can do it. My daughter was able to start one. It's a little tricky sometimes, but you can do it. You need birch paper. Uh, small twigs and you could actually get a little fire going but we're going to show you when was it not long ago someone says to me you know what uh, when you live in the country you have no choice but to eat meat and I say bull fuddy you don't have to eat meat because you live in the country you could actually get pails of lentil and beans and dry beans and you could store them in your cottage or your cabin and you really don't need to kill any animals whatsoever. Make sure you have you could dehydrate some of your foods. There's so many ways you can do it. And I'm going to show you. I have no water out here. I have just a small pot that I'm going to make a little bit of soup. But I'm going to show you that we're going to take some snow. And always look for clean snow when you're doing this. Basically, you want to find some little branches anyhow while she's making that fire I'm gonna show you uh, say I have no water and uh, you need to make yourself something hot uh, you can simply get yourself some some clean snow everything's frozen over here always make sure there's no deer your poop or always make sure you get it nice and clean but you could actually make yourself soup with just some snow or if you have enough water that you're carrying with you then of course I say uh, use that but once this boils it's gonna be just perfect there's no animals that walk by it or did their business. But I want to show you how easy it is to make some delicious food out here and it doesn't have to have any animals whatsoever in it. I did dehydrate some of my vegetables so I brought some of that with me and I have some uh, lentils. I'm not going to bother rinsing them because I'm out here. But How's that fire coming? Need some more twigs, maybe some more birch. A little hard to do when everything is wet, but it's possible. Once that fire goes, then you're okay. It's just getting the fire to go. We were lucky because we do have wood out here that we're going to use. But if you would be out in the wild, obviously you would have to um, harvest some wood. Uh, always try and harvest the wood that uh, either are dead on the ground or you know, basically are ready to topple over. Here. Yeah. So, I'm just going to loosen up this brick. And I'm trying not to burn my hair. Okay. So I'm just going to put this wire brick near there for now. So I can use this to heat up this pot of snow and uh, and guys you know that if you're uh, using a pot of snow uh, a pot of snow gives you very little water so you have to really keep getting some clean snow and hopefully you find some where no animals have gone uh, but if you boil it long enough uh, you won't have a problem yeah we're gonna have to feed this so we're gonna get this going and feed it some wood. 
and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a delicious lentil soup and uh, yeah no animals guys you really don't need animals just because you're in the wild doesn't mean you have to kill for food okay so I'll see you in a bit guys oh, so nice and warm near the fire okay so I'm using a piece of wood to keep my pot covered otherwise I'm gonna get all that stuff inside my pot and I'm trying to get the snow to melt I'm probably gonna need a lot more snow so maybe Erica could get me some clean snow hey, Eric yeah, I'm and I'm trying not to get my wood to catch on fire so every once in a while I will look at that a pot of snow is giving me hardly any water it's like crazy you would think that if you fill up a pot of snow that you'd get a pot of water but you really don't so this is in a way if you're roughing it because normally since I'm out here at my mother-in-law's country house I would just get some water inside but if we were hiking like Erica wants to do winter hiking and we want to be able to uh, go away and be in the woods for uh, say three days we would need a way to make food without uh, you know whatever means we have if we have a little bit of uh, if we have no water how would you uh, make how would you make your food right you would need water to be able to cook some food let it be Thank you, Erica. Let it be a backpacking uh, meal, or if you want something hot to drink, even if you have bars, you say, you know what, I'm gonna just eat bars. Uh, you still need water to keep warm, and because it will get cold out there, guys. So, if you have snow, if you get some clean snow, you can use some clean snow. And as long as it gets boiled, we're all good. Like, again, we're lucky because we were able to get the wood right from our uh, our backyard but if you were in the woods and you had to stop and make something to eat you'd have to find some uh, dead fallen trees that you can cut up you have to find a way to melt some snow that's for sure oh, so much nicer with the fire going because it's pretty cold out here tonight Erica, where's my uh, spoon? Can I have my long spoon? Okay, so we're going to wait till the snow melts. I'm not going to make you sit and watch this. Um, but we're going to wait till the snow melts. And then we're going to put some things in together. And show you how fast it is to make uh, delicious soup with very little ingredients. Uh, I have some dehydrated vegetables that I picked up at Bulk Barn. You could either dehydrate your, your own. But... If you're, uh, you know, if you're in a pinch and you're off to go hiking, it's always good to buy some of these dehydrated vegetables and keep them handy. And when you need them, you have them uh, and you need very little. Uh, I did bring some uh, lentils. Like again, if we were in the wild now, in the winter, I wouldn't be able to wash my lentils. So I'm going to just throw them in the way they are. Um, and I had some potato flakes that I'm going to throw in there and that's all I'm going to use. No oil, uh, salt, uh, but if you're backpacking or hiking, you're going to have a little bit of salt on hand. Uh, even a little bit of oil if you want to add oil to your, uh, to your meal. But very, very few ingredients to make a very delicious soup. What I wanted to say to you is if you have a cabin up north, uh, you don't have to go hunting uh, to replenish your pantry. Uh, you could yeah, buy because lent a lot of people think just because you live up north, you're far away from everything, and so you have to live off your land, hunt, and all these things. No, if you, you don't, don't have to. No, you can buy all of your stuff in bulk, have it all year round, learn how to forage for uh, certain foods. That plant a garden. You know, plant a garden. Like, there's so many things you could do. You don't have to hunt and kill just to have meat all year round. That's you can right. Live off of lentil all year round if you want to. That's right. You really can. Uh, you could uh, get those big storage bins that you can uh, fill up with 
Uh, you could get one full of lentil, you could get another one full of uh, romani beans, another one full of kidney beans, whatever bean you want to store. Uh, they are also airtight, uh, so it's not hard to um, it's not hard to survive as a vegan uh, up in the country, uh, even if you're off grid, because you could always go to town and buy these big bags of lentil and fill up those bins and always have them uh, in your cabin. So. It's not as hard as some people make it sound. But just to show you that if you're ever stuck, I'm just trying to get that nice and close, uh, and you have no water and it is the winter and you're doing a winter hike, you can always melt some snow and get yourself some uh, water to drink or water to cook with. And look at that. You see, this is the second time we filled it up. And look how little... It's melting down to nothing. So you really have to keep getting. Um, you got to keep melting that snow if you want something to drink or something to eat. Uh, it takes a lot of snow to make some water. But yeah, anyhow, here's what it looks like over here tonight. It's pitch black up there. We have a nice hot fire. We're sitting outside, my daughter and I. Hopefully we're going to see a couple of deers come and eat. I put some sweet potatoes out for them. Um... But yeah, very easy to enjoy the outdoors. Today we went hiking, thanks to my husband's cousin. He let us use his land. He's got uh, over 150, 160 acres of land. And uh, that was great because we went all the way up to the top of his land. He has kind of a couple of loops where you go up one way, come out the other. Uh, but it was really, really nice. And uh, we had a good workout, that's for sure. I was happy that we used our snowshoes because there was a good grip because they have those spikes underneath. We were able to um, uh, feel comfortable without having to, you know, without slipping because with the warmer weather, the snow kind of melts and then the snow kind of, when it snows again, it covers that ice. And if you don't have good grips under your feet, you could really slip and hurt yourself. But those snowshoes really helped us, eh, Erica? Even going down, uh, down the, uh, the mountain. Uh, I wasn't worried at all. Like I had really good footing. But yeah. my lentil. There we go. I have some dry vegetables and dry spinach. Uh, spinach I dehydrated myself. Uh, the vegetables are just bought and I have a bag, a nice bag of lentil. Now these aren't rinsed because I'm just showing you if we would be uh, outdoors I really might not have enough water to um, to rinse my lentil so I'm just going to use it the way it is so much smoke in my eyes. and I'm going to pretty much use my hands
just eyeballing the soup. Probably, did you use half? Yeah. So probably a, a, a cup of dry lentil. Cup and a quarter, cup and a half. And this little bag, we use it when we go hiking. So I am gonna not throw that plastic away or my little dry sack. That helps keep my vegetables nice and dry. So this goes back home. And I'll be able to dry some more vegetables or buy vegetables already dry and I can bring it on my next trip. So like, you know, if you do have a little bit of plastic at home, don't throw it out, guys. But get yourself these uh, cotton bags. You could actually go to a bulk barn and you could fill up your lentils just by bringing your bag. And it's a lot better than having this type of plastic, which I keep reusing because I just don't want to throw it out. Okay. That's more than enough to make soup. Leave that one on the outskirts, yeah. Thank God for this fire, because I'd be frozen by now. Yeah, if you're ever gonna do like a, a winter hiking trip, you wanna make sure that, you know, that fire is started way before it gets dark, right, Erica? Mm -hmm. You wanna get that fire going way before it gets dark. Uh, this way you can heat yourself up, get your tent already put up. And, uh, yeah, because it does get cold. So, we're lucky because, you know, we've got the house right there. All we have to do is go in a few steps and we're nice and warm in that house. But if you would be doing a camping trip, an outdoor camping trip, you want to make sure this is all done uh, before the dark comes because... In the winter, the dark comes really, really fast.
All right, guys, dinner is almost ready. And it's absolutely delicious. We did have to add extra, we did have to add extra snow because of uh, the water was evaporating. My dog is so sad right now because he is not out here with us. But he's too little. Hey guys, I have very little battery left. Uh, I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, we had to come in because Chi Chi was crying. And, um, but I wanted to show you. Today we picked up some beautiful pine that we're going to be able to make some delicious tea with. Uh, there was a little bit of chaga that we found. It was so frozen to the tree that I was only able to... I'll break loose a little bit, but uh, Eric and I is going to enjoy a nice tea with this later on. So we're going to make a nice pine and chaga tea. Now, if we were eating outside, we'd be using our mugs to enjoy that delicious soup. When I tell you it's delicious, it's delicious. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's the soup. And basically, uh, it was... Oh, I'm steaming up. Uh, it was a little bit of lentil. I'm trying not to steam up on you. There's a little bit of lentil, um, some dehydrated vegetable mix that uh, we, my husband picked up for me at um, Block Barn uh, when we started doing our trails, uh, our hike, our backpacking uh, meals. And so I brought some of that and the spinach that I dehydrated myself, I threw that in. And basically some snow because we wanted to show you that if you're ever out there in the winter, and you have not you don't have enough water you could actually melt snow then when i came in to see my doggy i saw a tomato on the counter and i just threw it in and that's going to go on my plate for sure but very simple a little bit of salt there's no oil there's no fat whatsoever and you can eat really healthy so i'm going to say thank you guys thank you for uh coming hiking with uh, with us and watching us show you how easy it is to make a very fast and delicious soup and remember guys just because you uh, have a cabin in the country doesn't mean you have to kill an animal you could bring loads of dry lentil and beans and that can be uh, your protein so I'm gonna say thank you Erica yeah and we're gonna go eat we're still gonna use our cute little mugs and uh, I'll see you in my next video guys for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawson Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.